tell us about the others in 4K, Mark. Uh, yes, I will. So, uh, so now, look, Tom's going to snigger. Alejandro Amenabar, is that right? I don't know. What are you asking me? Uh, <laughs> he'll, Ale- only t- he'll only tell you if it's wrong. I know. I know. So Alejandro Amenabar's 2001 classic ghost story. I'm not going to dwell too much on it. It's it's still a really, really good chiller. Sort of sits halfway between uh, The Sixth Sense and, for me, uh, Del Toro's The Devil's Backbone. It doesn't lose anything on this umpteenth rewatch because of you know where where the story ends up going. It's all about that mood, that atmosphere. And if you do want to just scratch under the surface a little bit, there's so much stuff there. The fact that uh, Amenabar's being of Spanish heritage and sort of that country's relationship with war, the fact that it set this story that didn't have to be set anywhere near a war. It set it just coming out of World War II and on the Channel Islands with its own very, very varied history with, with, with the conflict. There's so much going on under it, and it's, it's, it's a fantastic film. The 4K disc on paper is a really interesting one. So it comes with no wide color gamma and no HDR. So in essence, you're buying this for the 4K resolution bump. Uh, you know, you could talk about uh, encode and all that kind of stuff, but in essence, you do not have the usual mainstay of oh, HDR, Dolby Vision, wide color gamut. That's not there. Now, initially, as I was watching it for a film, I thought this was a really odd choice. The film is bathed. No, I scratch that. It's practically drowning in shadows, and these shadows are deep. They are black, none more black, as Spinal Tap would say. And you can't help but think that that HDR and wide color would have would have put a little bit of detail in it, would have just put a little bit more mm, oomph into those shadows. But then you realise that Amenabar was was much more interested in creating not just a period film in terms of its content and its mood, but in its look. It's lit by natural candlelight, but it's it's specifically muted to give it that late 40s look and feel. Of, of the visuals and you can't help but think but maybe hdr wide color gamma you know all that kind of stuff would have just pushed it a little bit too far however that's not to say this looks exactly like the old 1080p blu-ray it doesn't uh in some cases the films cool down a little bit faces have a little bit more of a, a, a naturalistic skin tone compared to the to the previous 1080p disc however it's not a blanket everything's cool there's a couple of shots where the walls behind, uh, there's, a, there's a scene where Nicole Kidman is, is following footsteps through the house. She walks into the library carrying a shotgun. And on the old 1080p disc, the wall is a sort of beigey, browny colour. And on this new version, it's a very overt blue colour. But the, the, the cooling down isn't overt. There are other scenes where actually it's gone the other way. Uh, the, the picture's warmed up a little bit. The the highlights from the candlelight on Nicole Kidman's face in a couple of scenes are much warmer. So it looks like some real care and attention has gone into the new colour grade. And just because there's no wide colour gamma or HDR, there is a new colour grade to this. And the 4K resolution, a lot of people say, oh, the, the, the bump in in 4k resolution for 1080p isn't all that obvious well it is on this one actually again if you do comparisons as, as, as i did you can see there is a there is a resolution bump here grain for the most part is even and is really well handled by the encode there's a couple of scenes where the grain disappears slightly but i'm chalking that up to early 2000 cgi fog just sort of blotting the entire screen out and 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 swathing everything in very low resolution pixels on the whole i got about half an hour into this film and i was scratching my head thinking there's not really an awful lot of difference in this image from the aged old uh, miramax disc but by the time i'd got to the end and i'd done some ab comparisons I i was sold on it there are it is better colored it has better resolution obviously the grain is better managed the encode is solid so all round from a picture front it does end up being a significant uh, nah, nah, scratch that it ends up being uh, a a definite increase uh, in terms of visual quality the other big ask here uh, of, of the film is that it comes with a brand new atmos track now i was all geared up for being bombarded with 
ghostly footsteps and whispers and all that kind of stuff. And again, you you kind of forget what a quiet film it is. It's a really quiet film. I mean, I'll make so much use of silence. But then, of course, it changes. It, it, it needs to be loud. It needs to be agile. And the track does that brilliantly. The number of times I jumped just because all of a sudden that footstep sounded very loud. Uh, and and in, in that respect, it retains all the goodness of the previous DTS track. The Atmos expansion, obviously, there's, there's some fun moments with footsteps running overhead. Of course, you like that. The biggest sort of sell of this is how to phrase this best. It sounds bigger. The rooms that they're in, even if it's only a whisper over here or a conversation going from the corner, you can hear the atmospherics of it and the echoes of it just slightly now coming out. So in that respect, the Atmos track really does add uh, a touch of size, scope and scale to these rooms. And of course, in terms of extras, the the big extra that we got here was a new 50, just over 50 minutes chat with Amenabar and Christopher Eccleston and Nicole Kidman. Uh, and I think the producer of the film, looking back very fondly at the time, but it was a very, very good open frank conversation about the film their time with it influences context legacy it's a very very good watch they've got a load of legacy stuff on there as well which of course is good and you come away thinking that's pretty good until you realize that the upcoming criterion 4k shares exactly the same transfer shares all the same extras and adds a couple of extra stuff. You've got a new commentary from Amenabar. You've got another interview with him, and there's a couple of other things on there. So all in, it's a very, very pleasant upgrade over the previous disc for a very good film. However, if you want the absolute best package, you are better off getting the Criterion, not just because it does away with that god-awful cover Studio Canal stuck on it, I mean, just bleh. Uh, but go and buy it anyway because it's a great film on a great this. <laughs> nice. If you really like the podcast, then buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash AV forums. Mm-hmm.